Hey, check out my jugs. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm 12. Hey there, gang! Welcome back to the Prop Shop. I'm Builder Ann, and I am continuing our series on molding and casting. If you haven't checked it out already, last week we did an introduction to silicone, totally worth checking out. Very important that you know what's going on over there, so go check that out if you haven't already. Today, we're going to talk about the material that we put into that silicone, and my favorite, urethane resin. Here are a handful of examples of some props and costume pieces that have been cast out of different types of urethane resin. For example, I've got a mask here that my buddy Chad did over at Hoku Props. Got a helmet my buddy Alan did over at Alan Amos Creations. We got a Reaper gun from uh, Jordan over at Henchman Props and a Destiny hand cannon that Xander did over at Z Props. These are all done with different types of urethane resins and I'm gonna tell you all about them. Urethane resins come in liquid form in two parts. Most of this stuff that I use goes in a one-to-one -one ratio, so two big old jugs. If you're a fan of Smooth On, you're familiar with the yellow and the blue jugs. This is a plastic resin and when you mix it together, the chemical reaction turns it into a solid, just like these examples right here. A couple of things to know about urethane. It does not like moisture. So while you're doing your casting, make sure you cap off those big old jugs when you're not pouring out of them. Moisture from the air will get in there and actually cause some problems. And of course, just like the silicone we talked about last week, urethane resins come in all sorts of Flavors and varieties. These all have different curing times, different colors, different pot lives, different conditions for different things that you want to accomplish with them. They also have a variety of shore hardnesses, just like the rubber that we talked about. Anything from sort of a rubbery consistency with your urethane all the way up to a super rigid plastic. Most of the time I'm casting stuff in the more rigid plastic variety like if I were to make a space gun. So here are a couple of examples that we like to use here at Punished Props. The first one is Smoothcast 300. It's a very middle of the road, very general purpose resin. It's really handy. It's useful for just about all the applications you could think for it. So if you're gonna jump into this, that's a great place to start. Smoothcast 65D is also similar to 300. They're both white, they cure totally white. Uh, but the 65D has a higher viscosity, so it sticks well to surfaces if you're gonna do any rotocasting, which we will do some rotocasting in a future video coming up soon. Smoothcast 325 is also very similar, but it cures uh, almost completely transparent, which is great for adding tint to it. And then there's resins like Onyx, Onyx Fast and Onyx Slow. Uh, the Fast stuff is actually also really good for rotocasting, but it cures jet black instead of the normal white. Most of these examples are the types of resins that you can mix up, pour into your mold, let them cure, and be popped out of the mold in less than an hour. Many of them even sooner than that. This stuff is really great. It kicks super fast and provides a really nice finished product. And before you ask, I've worked with Smooth On in the past, but they are not paying me for this video. This just happens to be all the stuff that I use. A couple other great things about the urethane is that it can be tinted, so you can add color to it. Just remember that the liquid is clear, but it cures white, or in the case of Onyx, black. So that will be mixed with your tint. So if you mix up a batch of Smoothcast 300, put in some nice dark red, and you want a blood red, axe or something, it's going to come out of the mold a really pretty pink. A good example of tinting, however, is something like Xander did with this hand cannon right here. He threw some, I believe it was 300, and then he put in some black tint so that the piece that comes out is gray. Now I'm going to paint this to look like metal, and if any of the paint gets chipped off of there, it'll go down to that gray, and you'll barely even notice it versus a bright white mark on the side of your space gun. Just like silicone, this resin ain't cheap. A big old jug like that costs about 100 bucks, but it's so totally worth it. And just like with the silicone, you can get trial size kits, and you should when you're getting started to build small things so that when you fail, and you will, because I've done it a lot in the past too, those small failures are a lot less expensive than pouring an entire 
two gallons of resin all over your shop floor. Now the general process for casting with this stuff is actually pretty simple. Like I said, most of that stuff comes together in a one to one ratio. Very easy to measure out by volume in a couple of different cups. If you're going to add tint to it, I recommend mixing it into the part B first before you combine your part A and your part B. This gives you more time to mix the tint in. The tint is usually really thick goo uh, and it doesn't like to incorporate that well. So you mix it into the B first, then combine your A and your B and the clock is ticking. Make sure you mix it up thoroughly though. Give it a good 10, 20 seconds of stirring there and then your resin can be poured into your mold. For the mixing, I like using some high quality plastic graduated cups. I'll have links to those down in the description. After you pour it is the magic time. You get to watch as your liquid resin turns into a solid piece of plastic. It's like wizardry. In fact, my brother's a chemist. He probably knows how it works. How does that work? Uh, uh science! Good point. Always make sure you read the technical bulletin and the material safety data sheet. This will give you everything you need to know about the pot life, how long it takes to cure, what temperature it likes to cure in, and proper measuring and pouring techniques. Some things to note about curing resins. Uh, this is an exothermic reaction. It releases heat. That means areas with a greater concentrated volume of the resin will cure faster and thinner areas will cure slower. That also means the heat will actually evaporate moisture from your tin cure molds thus degrading their lifespan. But don't worry about it. After about every five pulls from a mold, you can go in with some mold release spray and douse the entire surface, let it set about an hour, and then wipe it down again. This doesn't completely fix the mold, but it does help extend its life. A good mold should give you a few dozen pulls before it starts to rip and tear. And there you go. Along with last week's video and this video, you are armed with a bunch of knowledge about the materials you'll need for molding and casting, which is perfect because next week, we're gonna make a mold. We are ready to go and fire on all cylinders, so I hope you've buckled up. Next week's video will focus on making a simple one-part mold, so I'm pretty stoked and I hope you are too. As always, links to the tools and materials we talked about today are all down in the description. Go check those out. And if you're new to the channel, we have some old molding and casting videos that you ought to go check out. That way you get a pretty good idea of the sort of projects you can utilize with these materials. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, you definitely want to do that now because we've got a bunch more of these amazing videos coming out and you don't want to miss them. Thanks again so much for watching you guys. I'll see you next week and make sure you get out there, build something.